to that very humble topic today, talking about infections, allergies, and immune system is a form of madness because it's such a humongous area. So I'll talk some, but I leave time for you to ask questions because it comes with the topic, yeah? There's such so many angles and niches and nooks to the immune system and its function. So think about it. Like every good car, which is a typical male analogy, uh, the immune system can overfunction or underfunction. Okay? So, and if your immune system overfunctions towards the environment and attacks things that are actually harmless, like a well meaning grass pollen, okay? Innocent, well meaning, never ran into anything bad, doesn't have a shadow, purely good grass pollen. Okay, but the immune system suddenly erroneously thinks, wow, that could be something very dangerous. You have that unhappy ending of you having hay fever, potentially asthma, uh, if you're very unlucky, lucky hives, if even more unlucky anaphylactic shocks. Okay, immune system overreacting, reacting to stuff it should not react to. Yes, it should react to parasites. Yes, it should react to viruses. Yes, it should react to bacteria because they, once they're in our body, will do havoc. Grass pollen doesn't. Yeah? Everybody who has an allergy doesn't get more in contact with grass pollen or tree pollen or environmental allergens than people who don't have allergies, okay? So that stuff floats around in all of us, but if you have an allergy, you're oversensitive to it. And your immune system jumps on it, and then the immune system will continue in the usual way the immune system continues, which means it has a memory, and it is, like one of your worst enemies, unforgiving. Okay, that's in the nature of the thing. So this grass pollen comes along, you escape for a few years in the Caribbean or wherever you go for your extended holidays. No. And then you come back after a few years to LA and this grass pollen is in the air again and boom, the immune system says, I'm here, I'm gonna protect you against what? Nothing. <laughs> but uh, you have the symptoms. So that's one overreaction of the immune system for various reasons, we talk about it in a little bit more detail. The second category is autoimmune disease. Same thing happens, overreaction of the immune system, but not against an outside invader, which either comes through your nose or through your food, your food allergies or environmental allergies, but through structures in your own body. Okay, and these structures can be anything. There's 80, 100 different estimations, there's tons of autoimmune diseases, and the hallmark of that is that the immune system, which should not attack self, but only non-self, attacks self. Okay? And they can attack your hair, literally, and you lose your hair. It's called alopecia areata, an autoimmune disease, when you have this, you know, round uh, blotches of hair loss, not diffuse male or female pattern hair loss. It's brutal, yeah? Sometimes people even lose their whole hair. Autoimmune disease. Now, why does the immune system attack your own hair? Well, there's some theories, we talk about it, but it's complex. Same thing can happen to your brain, can attack your brain, called MS. Same thing can happen to your gut. Can, uh, your immune system can attack your gut, called ulcerative colitis or Crohn's disease. The same thing can happen to the immune system attacking your joints or other tissues called lupus or rheumatoid arthritis or mixed connective tissue disease and all these diagnoses your rheumatologist will give you always the same scenario for some often not so clear reason the immune system overreacts and shoots at things that actually shouldn't shoot at. Okay, so kind of a case of friendly fire as we would call that nowadays. And then there's a whole other category, the underfunctioning of the immune system. Now, if the immune system is not up to par, 
it's obvious what will happen. You will be susceptible to stuff from the outside, which your immune system, without you noticing all too much, short of taking your flu in a cold occasionally, handle. Yeah, I mean, do you know how many bacteria are there in your environment? Yeah, ten hundred thousand, ten thousand. You get a guess? Really? Huh? Really? Yeah, exactly. So it's endless. You know, so they estimate that on our skin, on our wonderful, well taken care of, um, moisturized skin, it's about 100 trillion bacteria. 100 trillion bacteria. Hold on, 100 billion bacteria. In your gut, it's 100 trillion. Doesn't really matter all too much. You couldn't count it. Okay? Tons of stuff. If you think about where we come from, the old days, we come from nature. You know, I've just been hiking in the Sierras for f five days and carrying everything in and carrying everything out. And you will notice that <coughs> unless you run into some very cold stream or a lake, you will accumulate dirt very rapidly. Yeah? Because dust, dirt, it's just there. That's nature. That's how we grew up for hundred thousands, for millions of years. Okay? We and the contact with bacteria. And, um, and if our immune system would not kind of handle these millions of potential different things that might want to get into us, and after we die, they will get into us gracefully, we would not, life would not be possible. Okay, so if you are having a weak immune system towards the environment, you will have recurrent infections, parasitic infections, yeast infections, viral infections, bacterial infections every five seconds. Now, occasionally having a viral infection once or maybe twice a year is not the end of the world, but if you have three, four, five infections a year, something's wrong. Your immune system is in one way or the other weak. Or then potentially even worse, if this weak immune system now is weak towards your inner surveillance, yeah? towards surveilling your own body cells and not picking up these mutated cells which happen all the time in us and are generated all the time in us called cancer cells and bringing an end to that by gracefully uh, and cold-heartedly killing them you will potentially have a susceptibility towards cancer. Okay? So weak immune system, tendency towards cancer, tendency towards infections, overactive immune system, allergies, autoimmune disease. So let's start for a moment with uh, infections. The time is right right now because the winter season is coming. And uh, we all potentially are exposed to more stuff. Why? Because we're living more indoors, other reasons for that. Um, so we're potentially more exposed. And uh, how do you protect yourself against viruses? Okay, which is important because once you catch a virus, it lasts about seven to ten days till you're over it, and meanwhile, you suffer. Okay, and are more or less out of it. Um, so viruses are around, the flu virus, as you know, from the swine flu scare, mutates and likes to mutate. Flu vaccine is a case of chasing, chasing behind the mutations of these viruses and trying to adjust it and trying to adjust it and always are one year behind because the latest mutations are not in that flu virus um, vaccine, in that flu vaccine. And um, so they're around. How do they get to you, air or touch? Yeah? So they normally come from you shaking hands with someone um, who has a virus on, on their skin, or someone sneezes and the particles, viral particles are in the air, and then potentially settle down on some furniture. You touch the thing, you touch your nose, your lips, and here we go. Okay? Incubation time for viruses, somewhere between one and four days. Okay? So you had this initial contact, and then after one or four days, you will notice, well, there's this rawness, <clears throat> you feel a little bit down, there's the beginning of headaches and what have you. Now, you have to be aware that there is a certain window. Did any of you ever take Tamiflu, which is an antiviral for viruses? 
approved, FDA approved stuff. They say take within the t first 24 hours with, uh, of it appearance of symptoms. Now why exactly first 48 hours? So basically two days, a window. Why would they do that? Why, do you have an idea, anybody? Why that, and then on the third day suddenly doesn't work anymore? Exactly. So what happens is that the virus gets into your nose and uh, into your mucosa and then starts spreading. But what it really does is at a certain point, it will go where it does its work. Yeah? Where do viruses work? Inside your cells.